very important. If you are interested in getting one of my shirts, you have four shirts to choose from. You have white, you have safety green, safety orange, and safety pink. The safety pink has been really popular with the ladies. So I am placing that order this Friday in the afternoon. So the deadline to order your shirt is Friday 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now on to the floodlight build. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this controller. This is a 44 channel controller. Here's the remote. Now hopefully I don't have the problem that some other people's had. Um, when we did the make and take Sunday when uh, Sybil had hers, um, these buttons are backwards sometimes and I don't know why. It's not nothing you do if that happens. It's an issue with the control with the either the controller or the remote. Um, but I did hear Sparky say that he read elsewhere where a lot of people have that issue. So then basically, I mean, it still works. You still have all your colors there. You just got to figure out which button is for which. So it's not that big of a deal. It's not worth paying the money to send it back and get another one when nine times out of ten might have, might have the same problem. Okay, I'm back. Um, you can see the LED is going off right here. I had to get another plug because the one I had didn't work. But you can see this one here works. Uh, I am using number two. So one thing I do, I don't know if you'll be able to see there or not. Let's see if I can find. Yeah, see right there. Right there. I put a number on all my controllers and my remotes because you got multiple remotes. I don't know. Let's see if they both work the same. Red. Okay. Well, apparently they do. Yeah, so see here, hush. I'm going to go from green to orange. Green, orange, green, orange, green, orange. So yeah, so that's cool. I can only use, I can use just one controller or one remote and go around everything. I mean, you can see I got my switch hooked up now. Got everything started back together. Remember that piece I told you earlier, don't get rid of? So you can just wrap that around there. Don't know if you can see that or not. See how I just got that wire wrapped around there like that? So that way when I screw this wire down, it is not going to go nowhere. And the reason why you got to wrap it around there is because your wire is not as thick as the plug. So if you screw it all the way down, it's not going to catch on anything. It'll still allow the wire to move. This is the other screw. Push this over a little bit. Okay. So see now that wire ain't gonna go nowhere. So I just want to take here for right now. Get your get these things here. There's your washer, just stick your washer up inside there. I mean, it's really not doing much. And then just screw this down. Now what I'll do is, I'm going to test this to make sure it works before I go any farther. Let's get this here. 
plug this up. Let's see, I've got this, got this plugged in here. I'm going to plug these two together, match up arrow to arrow. Don't force it in there, make sure you're putting it in the hole. So now, when I plug this up, uh, it might kick on, it depends on if the switch is off or not. So there's the LEDs. Let's see what here. Let me do it this way so you can see that and you can see the switch. So I'm going to turn it on. It's acting a little funny. Like I said, don't didn't know if this works or not. I guess it was just the way it was sitting. Yeah, this switch might be going bad, so I might need to replace the switch. See, it's the reason why you didn't want to solder these. You want to wire nut these in case you got to replace your switch. Then you have to go through the whole hassle of cutting the wires. It's just easier if you wire nut your switch in there instead of soldering the wires together. Yeah, I think it's, it's a bad switch. But it'll work for the purpose of the video until I replace the switch. Okay, so we're going to take this, all this, and we're going to stick this up in here. Very carefully. And like I said, if your light doesn't come with a, uh, a switch on it, no big deal. You can just ignore the part of me hooking up the switch. And I do not recommend you using drills on this. Just because of the fact it's so easy to take and strip these screws out. I mean, just take the time and hand tighten them down. You don't need to, you know, use a lot of force. You're just basically closing that, closing that around. So it's all nice and closed like that. Okay, so now we've got our Our light in here. Um, some people like to take and hook this up, or, or uh, not hook it up, but hot glue it in here. I don't think I'm going to do that, just because of the fact that eventually I do want to use my DMX controller, and I don't want to take a chance on breaking this by getting this out because of the hot glue. So I'm just going to set it in the bottom. like so. Let me go ahead and unplug this. So I'm just going to set it in the bottom like this. And that little pin I pulled out. Here's the little pins. You can see them right there. Uh, get them on eBay in a bag of five. Now see when you have this here, when you have this one done, you know, after you fold your wires down, you hot glue them down, but well, I'm just gonna let the wires stick up for right now. This sits right in there perfectly. See that sits right in there just like that. No gluing or anything is is necessary on that. With this here by using this board here, you need to put something along the side right here. And that's, I'm going to get me the two pieces of wood I got to stick in here. Okay, got this all glued up. I got, 
you know, I put extra glue on there just in case it happens to get hot in there. You know, I don't know if it will or not. Like I said, I've never glued before, so uh, why not? But you see the look it gives you. You know, with the wires rolled over, it makes it nice and clean. Now, do you remember when uh, I took the light apart? And these things were in there, and they was fastened to this. Well, while I was waiting for this to dry, I got the idea that you know, unscrew these. These were fastened. So on this side, or what side was that on? Oh, right here. You see the screw. That's fastened right here, like that. If you unscrew that. You get this little bar right here. Look at a little bar. Okay. See, it's got holes in it. There's a hole here, and there's a hole here. Well, this will allow you. So this ain't just moving around, bouncing all over the place. You can screw this down in here. Now, this is what I recommend you all doing. See the two wires here. See there, it's got the slot in so you can slide up and down. Make sure you got your wires on that side. Okay? Because you can put this screw in first and work this in there so you can get that screw in there. So let's go ahead and do that real quick while this is still finishing its last bit of drying. I'll stick this at the end of this like so. With that being magnetic, it'll stay on there. Line it back up. There we go. I see it's full of screwdriver around. That's tight. That's tight. Now, as you can see, that's not going nowhere. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is let me get this out of the way. You want to hot glue this down, the sensor down. You want to hot glue that down. Now do not put the glue by the sensor, put it back a little ways. Oop, got glue in my hand. Alright, I'm going to hold it down on both sides and let that dry. Because this will work, the remote will work through the glass, as you'll see here in just a few minutes. We're almost done. Okay, that's good enough. It ain't going nowhere. Um, let's take this, our board right here. Don't forget, you got to make sure your arrows match up. Like that. Got to power up the unit, which I forgot to do before I plugged it in, so it'll be a little tricky now. Okay. What I've done was I moved this wood down a little further, cut some of it off. Because the wires, when you fold the wires up underneath this here, um, it sticks out too much. So let's see how this is going to fit in here now. Match the arrows. OK, 
Okay. There we go. Fish just like that. So what I'm going to do is, um, you would hot glue this down, but I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see. There you have it. So you don't need to hot glue that down if you don't want to. Uh, what I might do is take, and because just in case, you know, don't want to hot glue it down, me personally, because the fact is, you know, what if something goes wrong? If you got this hot glue down, then it's going to be hard to get out. You don't want to put no pressure on these LEDs whatsoever. So if you got to pry it up because of the glue or whatever. But if you look, there's enough room on the side there on both sides where I can just take and put just a real tiny screw real tiny screw pre-drill it and just put a real tiny screw in there and I do one on each side because the only thing it's going to do it's going to stop this from moving around and uh, I'll show you you can see you can hit the remote right through the glass so there we go uh, you witnessed me making my first LED floodlight so I'm sure the video shows that so now I know what to do and everything because if I would have had all my stuff with me Sunday at the make and take I wouldn't have come across the problems but it's just like anything you do for the first time it, you're going to take and come across the issues that you got to figure out but again you know this is decent uh, decent cheap product or uh, project the LED kit which is actually if you get the LED kit which I, re I recommend people doing just go get this it's a whole lot easier because you won't need any of the wood you won't need that backer board because this will sit right well you know what here I'm gonna take this off even though I don't have that hooked up let me turn it off first take this off let me pull this out real quick and unplug it now this board right here just in there This will sit right in here. Let me see here. Let me get this around. This will sit in right just like that. And now look at my sensor. See my can you see my sensor right there? Right there, you see that sensor. See that sensor. You can either run, you can run it through this hole here after you put the wires through, or you can simply just just drill another hole, or you can stick it in a corner right here. But see how this fits in there perfectly. Now, if we had all these wires tucked under, uh, you would see how easy this fits in there. So, this is like twenty-five dollars. At holiday core and I, this is the way I recommend you going because uh, it's just a whole lot easier this this way works also um, I kind of like this I kind of like this way also because of the fact you know I'm able to screw down my LEDs backer board to the wood here and I mean even though there's not a lot of movement <coughs> your lens is straight up against your LEDs okay it's basically what, it's, what it looks like without the wires pushed down and with this here you don't have your LEDs pressed against the glass so there's a little gap there and so I, I, I 
like the way this here is done. But if you, if you don't want to go through the the route of you know cutting the wood, gluing the wood down, and stuff like that, you can you can uh, get the kit. If there's anything else that I'm forgetting, I will take and add it. But I believe that is it. This is the bulldozer with my first LED floodlight build. Get your scare on, and I'm out of here.